Instagram. The engagement today is uh, is a lot more gentle than it used to be. It used to be a very physical affair, and they took it out because of the strain and stress on the players' necks and, 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 and on their on their heads. It's just kind of more about holding up and trying to move over to win that possession. Yeah, sounds like and just like that. Denton has a hard push on it. Yep, and uh, dogfish break up and. Uh, Denton awarded a penalty for not con uh, for dogfish not contesting the scrum properly. All right, sorry about the delay in getting the action to you. We've got 24 minutes left to go here in the first half. Ditton had a quick score early on to take the 7-0 lead here. Uh, we're playing 30-minute halves for the third match today for the second and third, or excuse me, third and fourth place game in the Division Four men's for the Texas Rugby Union. We have Ditton with the line out. I didn't pick for the outside. Early on, this game seems to be moving a lot faster than the other two. Then again, as the game wears on, it usually kind of slows down, pace slows down with the heat and strain. Yeah, you know, the, the, the Denton side is, is actually a very good team. So, you know, I think you'll see um, some good rugby from them. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they are rucking the ball nice and quickly, getting the ball out, good hands in the back line. Nice move there by Blake. Blake. Gets it down as it Denton's trying to get their second try of the game. They're being very physical early on. Oh, they make the push in and get it in. Nah, that so 12 nothing's our score. This Ditton forces their way in. 22 minutes left to go here in the first half. You know, I don't know if you noticed there, the referee went and spoke to one of the Rockfish players. And that's, that's a great way to ref the game when you go to the players and you proactively speak to them. Uh, you know, warn them what they're doing wrong so that they can change what they're doing wrong and keep the game flowing. You know, there's no need to really penalise the guy if you, can, if you can manage it proactively and it doesn't uh, damage the, the flow of the game. Just kind of little, hey, watch this. Next time I'm going to call it. Well, it makes for a better game. I mean, if you got a referee that has no control, that's just going to make for a sloppy game. Conversion is going to be good. So 14 to 0 is our score here with Denton on top with 21 minutes to go. The sun begins to get lower in the horizon. Hopefully cool things down a little bit, maybe a degree or two. Yeah, it would be good. It's been a, a warm, warm day for everybody. Especially early on. And, and this is, hasn't been too warm. I mean, you know, you start playing in the winter, so a little bit different toll on your body, this heat. Kick is off the chest of Justin Connor. Yeah, run by James George as he goes down. Yeah, good running. Get a call here. Now, referee picked up that they must have put a hand or a foot, or maybe even possibly a head, into touch, which by yeah, this indicates she's indicated a line out. Hey, hey. Come, come. Hey. 
with a line out to Corpus Christi. That back to the dogfish side, controlled by the dogfish. Ball bounces. Looks like nobody wanted to pick that one up. Yeah, I think. Mean, uh, Number just threw it out and uh, really didn't know where it was going. Yeah, it looks like Blues are going to run in here. Uh, they were some good defense. Some really good defense by the Mudfish. Uh, he's given the try. He said they've scored it. That was another quick try by Denton. Yeah, they're winning. The, they're winning. They're, win they're winning the physical battle here today. Sixteen minutes. Nineteen minutes left. Some nice crowds out here all day. Yeah, it's been been a good day. People come out in the sun and enjoy rugby. You know, it's a funny thing. I have so many people tell me, "Oh, you know, what is there to do here?" And, well, come out and watch a good rugby game, yeah. and you know, learn the sport. It's a it's a truly enjoyable game, both to watch and to to participate in. You know, when you watch, there's something going on all the time, backwards, forwards. Uh, it's enjoyable to watch. That kick sails wide. Not a favorable side to kick from. I think the wind has kind of died down. I might be wrong there, but it's still hard to get it. Judge those kicks. Nineteen oh our score. Low lining kick, throw it in the middle. You know it's very interesting here when you watch these uh, division four games is that uh, while they're physical and, and, and uh, you know there's a lot of hard work and, and you know there's a lot going on. It's really uh, tactically it's, it's it's limited in, in the on, from a tactical aspect and you you'll see um, you know, on, on the kickoff, yeah, there you saw the the dogfish being on the ground, uh, getting involved and rolling back with the ball, which is completely illegal. But um, you know, from a tactical point of view, you don't see the chaps kicking into position and putting the other team on pre under pressure. Which, when you watch a a better division game, you you'll see exactly that. You'll see the kicks. There's a lot more physical actual kicking during the game as well. I've noticed that where they're trying to move the ball more and they're f with their, uh, you know, running it as yeah. opposed to like yeah. said, just kicking it and not trying to really play the field position game. Is it more kind of like ABC rugby? And what I mean by that is just it's just kind of straightforward, just kind of well put down and run. Division four is a, a division developed and created by the TRU uh, to introduce people to the game, let new players come in and join, and, and um, so consequently you have uh, people who you know have never played the game, so. They're catching and passing and um, the various um, skills of rugby are not what they should be and um, consequently you don't see the tactical game because they don't really understand what they should be doing, when they should be doing it. Yeah, well Denton's going to look more strategically sound than Corpus is. On this one, it definitely won the possession battle. And Denton has a band down on the field as they run in, and they're going to get the other try here. And he'll run and give his kicker a little chip shot as he sets it in the middle. That was Eugene Mena with the try. Which is this lead 24 to nothing with 15 minutes to go in the first half. It's been 100% Denton. As I got a hobble player who's going to try to walk it off.
often these guys just get a bit of a bang on their knee or on their thigh and uh, yeah, a little bit of walking, a little stretching and it uh, feels so much better. That's Caleb out there. And he's going to try to walk it off. They want him to come out, but he's going to see if he can walk it off. Get a little charted horse, get a little knot in that muscle. You know, it's a funny thing. Uh, we, we, we have uh, uh, a company called Pickle Juice that sponsors us. And uh, uh, incredible thing, uh, these guys get, uh, st uh, you know, stitches and muscle uh, cramps. And they take this pickle juice and it, it's an unbelievable thing. And um, it helps all of them. And you'll see during the next game, you'll see our guys with the pickle juice in the water. I've, seen, I've heard about that, drinking pickle juice and just something that's... Uh this generation's uh, tonic or ailment that they'll drink. Yeah, it, it tastes it tastes just like uh, uh, pickles, um, but um, it's actually I'm I'm told nothing to do with pickles at all. But it has many of the minerals and uh, uh, vitamins that one needs in your body as you get dehydrated during the day, and replaces all of that. Well, if they don't start testing for pickle juice, then I guess you're okay drinking it. Exactly. <laughs> Rugby again with the oh, rugby. Denton again with the possession. And a little shoestring tackle back on his feet because he wasn't as you can. Kind of recap in the day that we kicked off with the match, the championship match between Fort Worth and Houston. Fort Worth takes that one and wins the first D4 championship game in the Texas Rugby Union. And we had the expansion game just recently with the Dallas Harlequin versus Bark, Bay Area Rugby Club. And Dallas won that one. This is match number three between Denton and Corpus Christi Dogfish. It's been all Denton. As they're up 33 to nothing with 12 minutes to go. And I, I think there's a, a, a real chance if uh, the dogfish don't uh, start working a little harder, it's going to be you know much of the same in the second half because I see the dogfish guys, seem their forwards seem to be absolutely exhausted. They're standing right on the line, they've got to be behind the kicker, so let's hope they don't even move. There we go. That's fielded by Ian McDougall, looks for to pass it. Plays it up the middle. And just a quick little run by Logan Allen. Oh, he did moves it to the outside, trying to find room to run as he's brought down. Ball's kind of bouncing forward. Yeah, ball Probably. actually was knocked on there on the other side of the ruck. The ref was, couldn't really see couldn't that. See he was that obscured, one. but um, Denton lucky to get away with that one. Denton's going to try to go the other way with it. Try to open up some space. It's been successful. Yeah, and he's off to the races again. Got one man to beat. Shakes him. It's Ryan Harmon still on his feet. And he's going to be in there for the try. Yeah, yeah like very difficult to defend when you're running backwards like that at pace and the guy's running straight at you. It's, it's almost impossible task. Uh, um, yeah, once he starts zigzagging, you, 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 you know, it's very tough. So. so what are you doing there? I mean, it looks like in that position where he was staying high on him. I mean, is that where you want to just break down and well, if you, try if to you go low on him? If you're able to get to him and tackle him, then... You know, you want to wrap up his legs, he can't go anywhere with that. But, uh, you know, these guys were backpedaling, they weren't really close to him. Uh, what you want to do is get to one side of him and force him towards, away from you. Don't let him cut back on you. Because what he had the defense doing is running forwards and backwards, forwards, backwards. And they were, you know, there's no chance. Absolutely no chance. We well, got that much space to run. I mean, you got, you've got the advantage because you know where you're going. They don't know where you're going. Yeah, I know that's a that's a tough ask for any any defender, but uh, you know you 
when you stand flat-footed, you have almost no chance. You've got to at least come up and put him under pressure. Um, you know, make, make him, force him to make his move earlier and give yourself a chance. Just make the play and just to see what happens from there. Yeah. And there were two guys back, so if one guy had actually come in on him and forced him to do something, the other guy, if he'd gone that way, the other guy could have taken him. But um, that, that's an, an experienced, um, you know, coordination of two backline players. So, you know, at this level, that's a, that's a tough ask. I mean, he, he was going to score all the time. So 40 to nothing, our score. To the middle. Sympathy. Uh, then Lexi kind of running up the middle of the gut. Yeah, the dogfish really aren't tackling at the moment, so it's going to be really difficult for them to, you know, to stay in this game at, at this rate. Den's been doing a good mixture of kind of setting up the middle run and then going outside with it as we got an injured player, Derek Nelson. I don't know if you saw that. Somebody ran in and pushed him by his shoulders and he's got a neck pain, neck injury. That's James George got tackled. As a, as a defender there, the inclination is to hold on tight and not let go. Um, and uh, you, you probably found that's what he did, unless the ref actually they scored it and he awarded a try, it looks like. Yeah, because it looks like when he brought him down, he did let go. So he did go to the ground, but he was able to get back up, I guess, because he wasn't holding him. Yeah. So this is the first half, and it's 40 nothing. It's just going to get worse in the second half. So hopefully the dogfish, the coach has something for them at half time and whispers some words of wisdom, maybe change a few things they're doing wrong. First thing they have to do is tackle. Yeah. If they start tackling, it'll make a big difference. It's like been, uh, pretty much all the scores have been on breakaways. Yeah. You know, there's an old saying in rugby is that if you get your opponent on the back foot, that's half the battle won and um, you know unfortunately Denton are running at these guys and they're not protecting them and uh, consequently Denton and uh, Dogfish are just going backwards so that conversion wasn't successful so yeah they're getting past their first level easily and then just once again to that to the backfield it's it's game over yep yeah uh, dogfish aren't working back, so there, there's one guy left at the back to make a tackle on two or three people. It's very difficult. So Den's pretty sizable, so it's that one wing trying to tackle a sizable uh, back there. That's not going to work out for him. So 45 does nothing. Our score here, six minutes to go in the first half. Wobbly kick, filled it. And Michael Greer. He's brought down on the far side. Didn't get set. Trying to tack on some more points. We don't think we've seen a, a, a drive or a push by Corpus Christi yet. Or opportunity at least. And again, off to the races it didn't. One man to beat. Great tackle by by the fullback. That's all he could really do. Yeah. No yeah. one's coming there to help him. He made his tackle and they were there in numbers and that's what happens. Michael Greer in for the try. So Denton's halfway to a hundred. Corpus is you have to get on the board.
got to be hard for a team to kind of immensely get back in. And, I mean, you're, you're tired, you're hot, and you're down by 50 points still in the first half. So that's some big heels to overcome. Yeah, I think this game's um, out of the reach of uh, the Dogfish. I think uh, for them, it's uh, them hanging out and just uh, doing what they can to see the rest of the game through. We had some close matches the first two games. This one's been quite the opposite of that. Yeah, actually that Fort Worth game was really a, a, a great game for all involved. Um, you know, the losing team, it was really cl close. They were in it, at, you know, right through the game. So it wasn't that they were blown out and spectators saw the lead swing either way. And an uh, enjoyable game to watch. Um, unfortunately, this is been a little lopsided so far. Yeah, it's quite the opposite of that one. Have you ever been on the opposite side of a drubbing like this? Um, not that I recall fondly. <laughs> <laughs> so these are like, so what you're saying is you kind of get over these games pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean if you, if you hold on to a loss for too long then your career can be dismal because you know, th there's very few players that have never lost in their lives. I mean, you play for all sorts of clubs and teams throughout your life. Yeah. There's times, you know, e even when you when you you know a lot of a lot of games you see, especially in this division, Division Four, you know, you you'll see the one team run away with it. There's so much involved in, um, you know, what, where your players come from, who are they? You know, clearly, clearly many of these players are not, um, you know, it's not their first season playing rugby. So, you know, there's many players here that have that that have played uh, many years before. Um, so when you play a team like that and your guys are all new, you have no chance. You have very little chance of being being successful. So as you get higher up and you play you know, strength versus strength, um, the games are much closer and uh, you can go out and win one week and lose the next. So. Okay. You know, it's it's tough to get uh, all 15 guys on the same page week after week, and so consequently, you, you see uh, much tighter scores. So Corpus Christi gets a little win here with a try. Now down only by 45. Suppose like you get that first try of the game, and you're down by 50. It kind of just feels good because you're actually like, hey, we can actually do this, get on the board. Well, it's quite ironical when we sit on the sideline and we look, we say to ourselves, these chaps have no chance. They're not saying that on the field at all. No. They're saying, hey, boys, we can do this. We can do this. If we play the first half like they played and they play the first half like the second half like, they, like we played the first half, uh, you know, we're in for a big game. And that's, that's how they look at it on the field. And, um, you know, they, they will keep fighting. They will keep trying to be successful. And... Uh, and they won't give up. You know, the other thing is they're going to have the wind in their favor in the second half. Make a big difference. I mean, at the very least, I mean, you can make it a competitive match in the second half. Well, we, you know, we always say rugby's a game of two halves. And you, know, you play your first half, you meet and, you know, at, at half time with your coach. Your coach will give you some... Uh, some advice and some suggestions as how to change what you're doing and then you play your second half and uh, if your coach does a good job with the half and your players are focused and committed uh, it can be a very different second half now you just got to run the board every possession yep absolutely a few ticks on the clock left in the first half 50 to 5 our score in favor of Din. Corpus Christi actually was able to get on the board here late. They turn over by Denton and they were able to convert that into a try. Ball off his hands, picked up. You can see the, 
the, the flight path of the ball, uh, not, not, not a very uh, a strong pass. And uh, you know that, that's typical of a, a, a gentleman who's who's just started with this game. Just kind of throwing it out there, seeing what happens. Yeah, yeah. So you know, there's a guy that that'll learn and, and, and will will grow and, and get better as as he plays more rugby. So that's going to do it for the first half. Fifty to five our score here in favor of Denton. We're going to take a short break. Stay with us. We'll have the cameras rolling, and we'll be back with second half action. We're watching Texas Rugby Union on KMAX Sport. So we're getting ready to go here for the second half. It's been all Denton in the first half. We're getting cupcakes delivered to our makeshift booth. Thank you very much. So kick. Kick goes to Denton. And 
brought up. Number two, that's Philip Walsh. Walsh. So let's see what adjustments Corpus Christi made to uh, kind of cl claw the way back into this one. So just a reminder to stick with us as we do have one more match to go at. I'd say 7, but it's 7.03 now, so probably about 7.45, 7.50. Well, they're paying 30 minutes half here, so they should be ready to go about to stop. Playing a 30 minute half, so they should be able to go to stop at uh, 7.30. Falls down, Corpus falls on it. Not much they can do on that one. No, but what they did was textbook, so that's all that counts. Keep the hands out of there. There should be a penalty there. Hands in. Is he off size on that one? No, he had his hands inside a ruck. You've got to keep your hands out. Feet only. Picked by Corpus as they try to make a drive here early in the second half, trailing by 45. Overall, it's been a nice day weather-wise here. Usually around this area this time of year, we get the hail, the tornadoes, and everything else going on, but we've been sunny skies and nice breeze. Can't really complain about that. So Corpus is going to take the line out. So who won that? Yeah, it looks but like the ball was uh, knocked back by um, Denton. So we'll get another line out here. Thank you, sir. Got to stay hydrated even on the sidelines here. Huh? Yeah, that sun at her back. You can tell by the long shadows. So back the other way with it this is Corpus Christi. Trying to get a... Oh, a hot tackle there. The referee's arms out, indicating he was high. So what about that one? It kind of looked like he was ducking on that one. So when he went, yeah. he was going... It, a lot of controversy no uh, in, in rugby because they changed the whole tackle process. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say he's ducking into the tackle, but... The, the law is you can go around his legs, you don't have to tackle him around his shoulders. So if he ducks, he's entitled to do that. You have to go down lower. So, yep, yep. so he goes down, you go down lower? Yep. That makes it kind of hard to do as far as, I mean, it's easy as to be right here on the sideline saying that, but if you're in the heat of the action and it's happening that quickly, it's kind of hard to, to manage. Right there is uh, a pet peeve for me that uh, the, the Dogfish 8th man took the ball and tried to do a quick tap penalty. None of his players actually knew what he was doing, where he was going. Uh, and consequently, you know, they're now 20 yards behind where they should be. You know, team sports, it's critical. The whole team knows what's going on. And, you know, while you want to play this game at pace and you want to react quickly to every situation, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of uh, thinking ahead of what you do before you react um, pays off big time. And if they, you know, either kick for poles or 
Uh, just you know, taking the ball and driving it forward. See there again. Uh, he's like, like he's trying to no look it back. Same, same, yeah. same player. Uh, the eighth man just flicking the ball back. Uh, you know, now they've got a, a, a line out ten yards behind them. You know, just and, and, and it's not their ball put in. So you know, one one has to think very carefully in this game before you just react. I'm not saying that he's doing this here, but do you see kind of like a lot of, uh, do you see any like prima donna plays where somebody wants to be the hero or, or make that highlight move or, or play to kind of break something going, or is that something that's kind of uh, regulated on the field if you if you get out of out of touch with that? You know, um, I, we often talk about uh, rugby and football, and uh, football to me is uh, yes, it's a team sport, but it's more like a, a an individualistic sport where all your your players or individuals performing as best they can their, their specific duties. Uh, rugby is more of a team sport where you can perform your duties as well as you like. If your players don't support you, uh, they, you, have, you have no chance. Because there's 15 of the opposition that will tackle you. So, you know, it really comes down to, um, you know, how, how are you going to work with your teammates? That's Alex Mendoza in there for the try for Corpus. And so we've just been chastising Mr. Alex Mendoza, telling him, <laughs> telling, saying that he's done two things poorly and he does a solo effort there, runs, scores a try. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the game, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you heard us out there. Yeah, I just noticed that where, I mean, you get the try and you go back and, and you know, you get your water or whatever in, in, in NFL or whatever. You, you mean, you see like a 30 minute Dancing dance or and celebrating yeah. and a whole dog and pony show. Yeah, we, we you know, of, of course, there's a bit of elation. I guess when you're down 50, what is it, 50 to 10, you know, you don't want to celebrate too much. No, you, you yeah, yeah. Get on with the game. <laughs> so you may see a little bit more from uh, uh, Denton in that regard, but uh, generally we don't celebrate too much. We score the trial, we you know, cheer a little bit, and then we get back on with the game. Yeah, I can see that being handled quickly on the field by. Uh, Wind gusts coming around, blowing everything apart. Got an umbrella just fly over here and attack our gear. So with the try, it's 50 to 12 now. In favor of Denton, 21 minutes to go. Corpus with the ball. Trying to make a quick play for field position there. As Corpus gets set here. Seem content just trying to get the inches here, just going up the middle, finally kicks it out wide. Oh, yeah. great breaks through the middle. Got one man to beat, see if he can shake him. Yeah, we nice little open field tackle there. Was that Shane Coleman? Oh, well played, well played. He picked up the ball, wasn't yet a ruck, so he was entitled, entitled to do that, even if though he was the man doing the tackle. There's another hard tackle, unfortunately. So as long as you get back up to your feet, you pretty much uh, free ball. Yeah, as long as you release the tackler, you, you, you can't continue holding them. So you get back on your feet, you clearly show the ref that there's a, uh, you know, no contact between you and the tackled player. Um, and then, then you can continue playing. Ben's going to kick it ahead. That's well played by number 14. He um, didn't touch the ball until it was out. So um, put into the dogfish. And you can see by the game now that the Denton side is struggling to maintain the clinical approach they had before. 
you think it's because they have such a high lead that they're just kind of laying back? Well, that's you know one one of the difficulties is when you when you start uh, putting on the points. Um, you know, the players in your team start saying, "Hey, I want one of those, and I want to score that, and I want to." And instead of focusing on the team pattern and the team play, they start focusing a little bit more on their own play, and uh, consequently, you end up with things not being as as smooth as what they should be. This ball picked up by the Dogfish, so they have the advantage. And the ref picked up there that there was a knock on by the Blues. They uh, should also. Yeah, he's not allowing that to go further forward. That was a short-lived advantage for the Dogfish. Uh, should be there put into the scrum now. Yeah. So the the reason why he blew that is because uh, Denton picked the ball out of the loose, so they would have had the ball and clearly no advantage uh, received by the Dogfish. Here. Time still winding down here with the lead 50 to 12 in favor of Denton still. Denton wins the scrum. Denton just uh, managed to win the ball that should have been. Oh. Oh, knock on. If, knock on, kick on. If he on was able to pick that ball up, that would have been points. He would have been gone. Denton. Denton made a mistake in dropping the ball and he should have easily picked that up. So line out to Denton. Oh, excuse me. It's all the hands up. Scrum to Denton. I do know the difference between the two. <laughs> oh, right through. Nice little leap there. He's going to take it all the way in for Brizio. Um. Yeah, that good individual try. He worked hard for that, did everything right deserved a good score. He had that head of steam and that's what they've been doing pretty much all game is getting that head of steam going and there's no stopping yeah. once they get that. Well, dogfish guys are waving. Come on, bring on the fresh legs. <laughs> Give Tapping. us a break in this terrible heat wave here. Tapping out. It's easy for me to say it's they're tapping out when they're out there playing in this heat. And again, yeah. it's kind of we only have really two weekends of hot weather, so you, your body's really not used to it yet. No, nah, not at all. You're not conditioned to it. <coughs> Conversion's good. Denton now leads this one 57 to 12. Come on, Denton, let's go! 16 to go. Yeah, when you consider that Denton turned 14-0 14, 14 up, I think it was. Uh, they only managed to score, you know, 10 points. You can see they, they're not the same side, and we spoke about the game being of two halves. And, uh, you know, Denton are playing against the wind, and it's, uh, it's not so easy to score against the wind. Well, it's like you get... For Corpus, I mean, he had a little momentum shift, got 12 points on the board, but then it's one score by Denton, and it just kind of takes the wind out of your sails, and it's just like downhill from there. Yeah, that's what uh, they got to fight against and not uh, not allow themselves to lose focus on what they're trying to do out there. High kick, killed it by Denton. He's going to fight his way down. Wide pitch up, and these are the tackles nice. that they got to make. As Justin Connor has some room to run, he's going to be taken down by the shoulders. Well, well played there by 
by um, the dogfish. Uh, the fullback came up, made his man tackle, and uh, even though the guy got away from him, the, the supporter was there to help. And James is going to take it in for another try for Ditton. Sixty-three now, or sixty-two? Still working on the math. Sixty-two, twelve, fourteen to go. That's been pretty much the story of the whole game. They get the, the little head of steam going, and, and Corpus can't take them down. So are all the matches played here at this field? Yes, this is where we train, um, Alliance Rugby Club, uh, together with our high school program, our women's program, um, and our men's program. We practice here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday throughout the season. The high school and middle school kids uh, practice Monday and Wednesdays, and the women's and men's programs practice on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So you all have a feeder system to the divisions? Absolutely. It's critical in this game. You know, you got to... You, you, People get injured and decide that, you know, I, I've got a job, I can't afford to get injured. Or they just get too old for the game. Uh, so you've got to bring new players in cons consistently. And, um, we, you know, the best way to do that is to start them young, let them learn the game at high school or, mid or middle school and uh, continue playing. I mean, I imagine that's where it starts. But if you want to grow anything, it's got to be grassroots, especially like rugby here, in, especially in America. So it has to start with, with the youth getting it into high school, junior high school, wherever you can. You know, this is a, an ideal game for uh, college, high school football players that maybe don't make the draft, maybe don't make college, maybe don't make, you know, the level they wanted to make. But, uh, you know, this is, this is a great game. It's physical in nature. It's... Uh, it's got everything you can want as a as a as an ex football player. Yeah, I recently just started, you know, maybe the past couple of years trying to learn this game as we got another breakaway. He's got one person to be who probably doesn't look too happy to try to make this play. Yeah, he's gonna have the angle on him. Yeah. That's a nice tackle. Yeah. A few mi meters short. And we were just talking about the open field tackle. He had a good angle on him. It looks like he waited uh, to make that angle on him. Ab absolutely. Is it? Dogfish now made a mistake or, or he's given the try. I think he's given the try. But, uh, you know, the, the dogfish fullback did exactly what you're supposed to do. Guide him to the outside, push him up against the touchline, and then, uh, you know, bring him down. we well, got a size disadvantage there with uh, Justin Connor being bigger than No, it looks like they didn't award the try. No. They gave him a penalty, some infringement down on, on the corner there. So it's one of the situations where he's got the head seem you can't take him on head on, so you got to play the angles. Denton is in for the try now. 69, 12, 10 minutes to go. We're going to have a couple of subs for Denton coming in. Looks like that's Raul Hernandez coming in the game. Now with 10, 10 minutes to go, uh, normally your subs come in about 20 minutes to go. Bring fresh bodies, fresh legs on the on the field. Um, keep the tempo going. Uh, they got 10 minutes to go and they're bringing them on. So, so do you have that set up kind of like you have? I guess in basketball they call it your sixth man. Like you have like players off the bench that come in towards the tail end of the games. Even soccer, I guess they do that where you have kind of like yeah, specific basically, player. Basically, we allowed a bench of of eight players. Um, and uh, you know th those chaps will come on the bench as replacements during the game. You have to have a certain amount of 
of, of players who are able to play your front row, in other words, your prop and hooker positions, so that one can continue scrumming throughout the game. Um, and um, and then you make uh, substitutions as you have to. So if somebody is injured or somebody cannot continue for some reason, you make those substitutions. And once that's made, there's no changing. Okay. Uh, unless they're a front row player, you can bring off a player and put back on a front row player. Um, and then you have, you know, what what I like to call the impact players that you bring on around about 20 minutes to go. Uh, you got a bit of time for them to get some rhythm going, and uh, you know, start playing, uh, lift the tempo, and start playing the game that you you maybe want to play in the dying minutes of the game. See, so he has some big mistakes by by Doc, uh, not Doc, but by, by Denton. I think they got some breathing room to make some sloppy plays. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, they They're going to get that one. No, that's all Another missed tackle. Now, that's no knock on. So, he, if he was going the other way and he tapped the ball down that, that way in defense, uh, he would have been penalized for that. But. Um, Going backwards, he, he's not penalized for that. Because he hit it back to the side of his, his zone, yeah, I guess, yeah. so to speak. And in for the try is Ivan Abrigio, Brigo, A-B-R-E-G-O, Brigio. Eight minutes to go here. It's a windy afternoon, 76 to 12, our score. Number 16 for Dogfish is a big man taking the field. <laughs> He's a big man. I take it he plays in the front five. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't actually know where he is going. Maybe, maybe he's giving his Sorry, colleague there a bit of advice. Comforting him. He still got his uh, little, I don't know what you call it, but a little different color thing on, whatever you got. I don't know what to call that, but. He's got a bib around his neck, I think he just can't get it over his shoulders. We're down to the last six minutes and 50 seconds here. Denton has been in control of this game since the opening kick. Lead this one 78 to 12. And they get the ball back. That's picked up by Michael Greer. He's gonna make a move with it. Quickly kicks it out to the right. Picked up on a bounce. Down the right hand side with a nice head of steam. And he's going to be held up there before finally being brought down. Swings it up to the middle. Nice hard play there by both sides. And Charles Ware being brought down. That's Abel Romero trotting up the field. Get a knock on. Yeah, I think <laughs> that ball may have gone straight down, but uh, I think the players are tired and weary. <laughs> and unfortunately, or fortunately, the refs also human, and <laughs> they get tired and weary too, man. They do. But they've had different uh, sets of referees out here for each game, so. Yeah, they've done a good job. There's been a number of them out here today, and. Uh, you know, they have to work almost as hard as the players to keep Actually, no. keep uh, in the same place as the uh, play, the actual play during the during the game. You've got to be very, I don't know, you got to have control. you got to be able to take control. I mean, you're out there with 30 large and life-size men out there, and you got to tell them what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. And you got to have some mental mindset to do that as a referee. If not, you're going to get run over. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, there, there's some 
uh, refs that um, handle uh, the game magnificently, and then there's others that you know just you know struggle the whole way through, and um, you know it's probably frustrating for them, and likewise it's frustrating for the for the players having to listen to that. But um, you know, as I said earlier, the the referees are you know are, are sacred in the sport. Uh, you know we we we, we um, you know we manage that both ourselves as clubs uh, very strictly and we manage it as well uh, through the the unions or the uh, the various um, controlling bodies and the refs uh, don't get abused they don't get uh, you know challenged and things like that on the field I've seen some videos of other sports where it's uh, you know it's completely out of control abuse of the refs I play hockey and they have signs on the glass that say any piece of language towards referees you'll be kicked out or suspended so <laughs> I don't see any signs like that around the field no no everybody knows it's just not accepted not allowed nice pick up there yeah as Rico going to take it in for the try that's going to make it 17 to 78. Able to capitalize on the Denton mistake there. You know, one of the most important things in this game is pressure, and uh, you put pressure on even some of the best sides, and uh, it's very difficult for them to execute their plays cleanly and properly. And uh, pressure can make a huge difference. And Denton have been fortunate that the Dogfish have struggled with the application of pressure this game. So they've been able to play fairly unhindered. So is this is a game tape that you burn, you watch it, you talk about it, or you just move on? Well, you know, um, what you should be doing is watching every single game tape. Um, and you watch the breakdowns in play, you watch what they do well, what what you do poorly, or defense, defensive pattern, your offensive pattern. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, a lot of these guys are or guys that make one practice a week if, if, if you're lucky two and uh, you know they, they've got jobs they're busy they're working and they just don't have the time or don't want to make the time to to spend more time you know understanding the game more so um, you know that's what makes D4 challenging and guys from this league will go up so to the division three and division two and division one and as they get higher in the league um, that they'll they work harder understanding what they should be doing or shouldn't be doing and and uh, consequently you end up with with the good guys coming to the top well, this is pretty much for love of the game at this level then this is a what pretty much for love of the game at this level you're you're out here yeah I mean pressing your time you know, really the guys playing division two and division one uh, you know for them there's a potential that they may break through into the professional leagues or into playing for your country but uh, you know from division three four down it's love of the game and getting out with your mates and running and you know getting a little bit physical on a Saturday we got about a minute left here to go in this game Corpus Christi has possession here, so they'll probably be the last. Well, as I say, that didn't get it. <laughs> Notice people starting to get up slower here as the yeah. game winds down. Yeah, it can be a tough, tough game when you're down by, you know, 50 or, f uh, 50 or 60 points and you've got five minutes to go. It can be very, very difficult. Uh, he trucked him on that one. So no time left on the clock. We're in extra time here. 
Can't be more than a minute or so. So he'll touch it to himself, kick it out. To end this one in favor of Denton, 78 to 19 as they win the consolation game for the plate. So this was game three match being brought to you by KMAC Sports uh, via YouTube. Stay tuned as we do have one more game, your game, your team coming yeah, up. Yeah, absolutely. Alliance Sports side. So stick around for that. That one's going to be kicking off here shortly. Uh, probably in about the next 10, 15 minutes. So make sure to tune back in and we'll see you here in about 10 to 15 minutes. <laughs> 